Welcome to this second tutorial on realism and anti-realism. Uh, this time we're going to talk about the materialism versus idealism debate. Let's just rehearse for a sec what realism was about. Two components. First, there is a reality independent of our minds, of our thinking. Secondly, our thinking is really about this reality. It, our beliefs really correspond to this reality. We said that if you hear such a term like realism, you always have to wonder, realism about what? What reality? What are we claiming that really exists independent of our minds? Or what, if we're an anti-realist, are we denying that really exists independently of our mind or stuff to which we should have access with our beliefs? Well, um, we enumerated some. You got, you got tables, you have God, you have Harry Potter, mathematical truths, quarks, etc. But you can also wonder about stuff in general. Is there really stuff that exists independently of our mind, be it tables, be it God, whatever? Is there, is there just any reality which exists independently of our mind? Question mark. And the idealism debate is really about this general issue. Is there such a thing, such as reality, which exists outside our mind? So it's also about mathematical truths and gods, etc. But actually, a lot of it focuses on material things. So we're going to have this contrast between materialism and idealism. And material things? God is not really a material thing, right? And mathematical truths are also not material things. Tables are. Tables are part of what philosophers call the external world. Physical objects belong to the external world. It's the world in which we walk every day. The floor on which I'm sitting right now belongs to the external world. And realists kind of suppose that um, this external world is material. That this table is really made out of stuff. And this stuff is something different than, let's say, what our mind is made of. I was tempted to say the stuff of which our mind is made, but then, then we say stuff. Uh, but this is, this is material stuff, and somehow thinking is something different. So there exists, there really exists some material stuff independently of our mind. This is, a, let's say, a materialist version of realism. Um, and what do idealists say? They, they deny this. There is no such thing as material stuff independent of our thinking. Everything, in a sense, is made of the stuff of the mind, if we want to use the word stuff again. So this table, too, it's, it only exists in as far as it is thought. So in a sense, it doesn't exist as a material entity. So I could either cross it out, as I did in the last tutorial, or I, I could, like... You know, this, this, this circle here is our mind, so I could, could extend it towards this table, right? So now the table is part of our minds. It only exists as a belief. That's really how idealists view it. Because, admit it, I mean, a, a table, yeah, we tend to think that it's made out of matter, that it's something material. It's made out of wood, right? But how do we know this? Um, in a sense, wood is also a thing which we see, and see this just means that we have, let's say, visual images in our brains of tables. And then you would say, yeah, but, you know, we know that it's made of atoms and this stuff really exists because we know it from the lab, but also atoms. In a sense, we only know of, of atoms in as far as we think about them. So, idealists say, Reality is fully dependent on the mind. Or mind precedes reality. Minds creates reality. And you know, there's an arrow here, and now this arrow can really mean it creates it. We create the table. The table does not exist there independently of our thinking, and so that we just passively need to wait until um, the table, let's, let's say, comes to our mind, no, we create it. It's our table. It's the table that we're thinking. Okay. And it's thus with all things, actually, right? So, um, mathematical truths as well. God is a little bit difficult. I mean, not, not, I mean, in that sense, idealists, and there's a tricky issue here, 
they don't necessarily deny one in an absolute way. Because if you take Kant, I, I named some idealists here, Kant, you know, the philosopher Kant, Kant. So he, he didn't say that there does not exist such a thing as a real table. He said that the table which we experience is made, let's say, out of the stuff of the mind. It's, it's a belief. But in a sense, behind this table, probably there exists something like a real table. Something. But we don't know what it is. Kant called it the ding an sich. It's a thing on itself. On itself. We, we don't know what it is. Because if we know what it is, it's already, it already belongs to the mind. So what we perceive already belongs to the mind. Okay. Now, an idealist, you might think that this is just the same as a relativist. Didn't we see the last tutorial that relativists believe that table is just something in our mind, quarks is just stuff in our mind? And no, it isn't. Because a relativist believes that people have different ideas on, let's say, what a table is, what, you know, uh, what, what God is, etc. So, but Kant believed that everybody thinks exactly in the same way. So this guy, he will just construct his, the object of his knowledge, let's say. He, he's going to construct his table in exactly the same way as that guy does. So you can actually be an idealist without being a realist. This is a tough idea to understand for a lot of students, why idealists are not necessarily relativists. But they aren't. So Kant, he believed in absolute knowledge. And it's because everybody thinks in exactly the same way. And they necessarily have to think in that way to acquire knowledge. You could think of it as follows. Remember um, cultural relativism. Cultural relativism kind of meant that, you know, you have people belonging to a culture and I said this guy belongs to another culture and within culture people think in a certain way but it's be between cultures that there is a difference within cultures pe people think in the same way this means that you know if there's another guy who belongs to this culture he, be he thinks in exactly the same way as this guy you know Kant it seems as if, you know, everybody belongs to the same culture. There's only one human culture, universal culture. They all belong to this one culture. They all think the same. And in that sense, you can, um, you can conquer relativism and still believe in absolute truth. Okay, and I'm going to leave it at that.